it's nice and cloudy it's six o'clock in the afternoon everything grows like crazy this time of year I thought I'd better do another report and uh, document the growth that's in the garden now when I uh, thinned out these rutabaga and that wasn't very long ago you could see that they were spaced out and now it's just one mass of green again these are normally what I get with the rutabaga and there's probably a cabbage moth around there someplace but they don't really uh, do much damage if you add them close together and then you thin them out and they'd be weak the moths would attack like crazy and they could wipe that out in like just overnight these are growing beautifully and I have to get down among them uh, and see but see they seem to be the weeds are growing back again of course like I said everything's growing like crazy this time of year but they're spaced out nicely and they'll grow just fine there now back in the corner this is the last uh, potatoes to come up but every one of them I'm missing one on that side and one right here so you remember I uh, planted the uh, radishes here so in among this there's a bunch of radishes growing and I went by and I picked off the weeds that I seen poking their head above the rest, rest of the foliage uh, but most of what you see here is actually it's radishes or stuff that I set there it's coming on nice this is the uh, cauliflower that's the broccoli I am going to get back again now and clear out around each of the plants that I'm rather wanting to grow and uh, some of the other plants I take out of it. I'm going to harvest some rhubarb again tomorrow or the next day. I am now at the point of where I was last year so when I harvest again I will have harvested more than I did last year. I weeded out this bed. I left tiny weeds there of course. Um, <clears throat> didn't want to really bother myself and trying to get out, out every last weed the sugar beets that I planted they're coming up there are some places where there's spaces but I think when I planted these I did space them out fairly well <coughs> Wattam butternut the three big ones this one especially it seems like it's going to give me some uh, fruit this is one of the smaller ones and another smaller one and the one that was really tiny only had one leaf you see it's growing potatoes are coming along the plant top anyway they're doing perfectly I've mulched these twice now <coughs> cabbage this cabbage died right down but it seemed to revive and I looked among this I wiped away around the roots I don't see any damage there this one seems to be reviving a bit but once again I look down there I think I knocked those two leaves off when I was actually searching around to see if I could see what the problem was with this so I don't know what the problem is the other ones are still doing just fine and I think the bulb is actually starting to form down in the bottom of them. So there's extra sprouting broccoli and the couple of kohlrabi that had gotten eaten, they're coming back. There was a snowshoe hare, we call a rabbit, running around here. And I've seen him several times, almost every day actually I come out and he was right close to the garden. I've never seen him actually in the vegetable garden. A few days ago I was down in front of my house, I was packing some wood in the basement and I looked up and there was this big red fox just dodging down the road with the hair in his jaws. And i never seen a hide nor tail of that hair since. So I guess he took care of the danger for me. Once again, this is the red potatoes. They're all coming nicely. You'd expect this bed to be lower because it's in more of the shade. And the 
front bed is growing excellent and they are all coming to flower now this bed of beets is doing wonderful for the most part is just one beet every two inches but some places there's a couple I think it's spread out enough that I don't have to worry about thinning these out Charles Dowding he started putting in two or three beets in a plug so it'd be two or three beets uh, planted together and they just push each other apart as they grow and that's what we did when we were kids uh, I don't know how we actually got the beets uh, the seeds set out but it would have been similar to this and as some beets got up about a golf ball size we would harvest them and they didn't all grow at the same rate so we'd be harvesting them over a long period and making pickled beets they're coming nicely in here beautifully along and uh, just the one little space right here that's got a few less beets and then the Detroit dark red everything came in so excellent and they got plenty of time to grow you can't go what I believe these are. Remember how small and scrawny the uh, oregano was? Greek oregano. When we cleaned this bed out. Now it's coming in really nice and fast. That's the uh, Ella Campaign I planted there. Mm, I think it has grown, but not very much. I've been harvesting from the uh, chives. And the calendula it's definitely not taken off but still alive so I guess at some point it'll take off that uh, savory I've got to get something set up because my uh, dehydrator broke and we've got six months out of the year where we depend on dried herbs because nothing is growing so I got to set up a solar dehydrator or something so that I can start harvesting this and actually you see it's coming outside and I want to keep it inside of those four pegs so I gotta start cutting it back here I guess this week now the parsley is coming along nicely I have some chamomile growing in this bed of course I didn't weed out this bed in the last uh, week or so so and these things they grow so fast but it's quick to uh, weed out once I get at it cilantro coriander See, they're coming up, evenly spaced. Apparently, I put two seeds down some holes. But every two inches, I've got a plant coming up in both rows. It's wonderful. There's uh, 45 days for leaf. And I can't remember how long it takes for it to go completely to seed. The amazing lovage. If you want to uh, have a celery flavored powder, I suggest you grow a lovage. I really like this plant. This time is flowering. See the little tiny flowers that the buds are? And so is the sage, broadleaf sage. This is kind of a uh, pea-shaped flower. Oh, that's a weed down the bottom in the center there. But there's, you know, there's some coming up, see, right here. That's uh, probably sage growing up from the center. Got to get at this and pick out the uh, weeds again. But there's some growing up in the center here. This uh, other lavender. But you see there's some right here growing out from the center of the bush. This one doesn't seem like there's much coming up over there yet, but at last chance I'll just dig it up and I'll cut that portion off and I'll just move this back to where it's supposed to be because this part here is growing just excellent and it'll quickly become a big bush again. <coughs> this is actually the best dill that I have growing. They've grown a lot since I planted them there. St. John's Wort, actually there's a lot of St. John's Wort growing in the area, so, but uh, it's nice to have your own plant and a decently draining soil, but this grows along the seashore, so you don't really have to have an overly um, 
fertile soil, but I think it needs to be fairly good drainage. The echinacea, this is the white echinacea. We don't have a flower coming yet, but I think that's the start of a flower bud. I moved a couple more plants up here. This is the Shintaku Ghost Pepper, actually. And it looks like it's going to start to flower out quite well. I moved it up here. Once again, the same reason why I moved the uh, Hosage Orange. It's because when I run the sprinkler up here, they'll get watered. And every one of them in these pots has leaved out. I think that was the last one when I checked them before. And I haven't checked them in the last few days that uh, had no leaves on them. But now every Hosey Orange is growing there. That's excellent. Quite a lot of the turnip is growing. I don't know why I got spaces down this end because you look up this end and it's right full. Now I'll clear it around that pea pla uh, bean plant in there uh, later, but I already cleared out around this one and this one here. Uh, we've only got three bean plants or four bean plants, something growing here. You see the holes, and I did find uh, yesterday a couple of cabbage moth larvae on these. These are a little worse than the rutabaga. And so I'm wondering, because turn up, they grow faster. They don't have as strong a leaf as cabbage and broccoli and the like. I wonder if they would be a trap crop for the cabbage moth, because when I've seen the cabbage moth flying around here, for the last two weeks but they're not bothering the cabbage it's just the uh, turn up here the most and then the rutabaga you've seen the fuels in the rutabaga the beans I put in here are growing nice since I put them there and uh, look at this you even got some flowers starting I left quite a bit of amaranth in this bed because I like amaranth and the leaves are edible as well as the seeds so I can use the leaves for a salad green and I like it. Uh, lamb's quarter is kind of bland to me so it's neither here nor there whether I have it there's a lamb's quarter there. Uh, so I normally take up the lamb's quarter because it's like I said it's neither here nor there I don't really care for it what's supposed to be growing here besides the beans is the kohabi they haven't grown a lot some are growing but they're sparse throughout all of the spinach or almost all of it is wanting to go to uh, bolt the seed in here and it's just July the 3rd right now And try as I might, I've got, I got a half a dozen radishes this year. Oh, there's another one right there. I can't seem to get radish to grow any sense for me. They always just go to seed. Ross of Burbank. Um, there is a difference, a noticeable difference between the plants in the two beds it seems like these have a deeper green which would suggest that they are getting more nitrogen than these over here but they both seem to be growing well I might get a very good harvest these haven't flowered out as much but there's one that the flower is about ready to open the mustard see the pea pods are the seed pods are growing now but if you look over the plants the plants really they're not growing that good uh, I think I really need to this is another bed of course you look down at the soil it hasn't been covered uh, I've got to cover this in compost before next year I took six strawberries out of here last night 
and I knew that there are several that are getting ripe all throughout here so I'm going to be picking strawberries quite a lot here going forward now these are ever bearing and so what they'll do they'll put on a big flush now and mm, say for about two or three weeks and then they'll die down and then early in September when the weather is cooling down they'll put on more so it looks like I'm going to get quite a few strawberries from that bed uh, this year of course I'm not going to get anything from this bed it's just a few little small plants I put in there so uh, those couple bigger ones I might get something off but it doesn't look like it and look at this corn now an EI by the 4th of July while well, this corn doesn't grow past an EI it's a uh, gas bay flint grows two feet high I have a good chance of actually getting some good corn off that this year I think last year I got some corn and a couple of aft produced heads uh, so this year it's looking exciting that I might get uh, well if I get two or three heads of full corn then that would be exciting it means I can do it right and the seed plants are growing nicely Woohoo! <laughs> look at the carrots a wonderful bed of carrots You see what I've got done in between them? Now that's just enough mulch to shade the ground. It's, it's not very much there. You can't really put a lot of mulch in between carrots because you've only got that little narrow spot to put it. But as I was mowing the meadow, I bring the clippings over and I just put down a little thin ridge in between and spread it out a bit to have something just to shade the ground. Over in this bed, just because it wasn't uh, amended well enough, the carrots aren't growing as well, but they are growing. I mean, for this time of year, they're up, they're nice. I'll get a good harvest from that over time. And then the uh, little finger ones, they're coming along quite good. I can weed this out now when I uh, mow again, I'll uh, put some mulch in between the rows. But that's another thing to note too, see, putting on that mulch of compost, I've noticed that in the regular soil, there's a lot more variety and harder uh, weeds to deal with than you get in uh, compost. Next year, I won't have all of these ground hugging weeds to deal with. Check the wisteria. He flowers out beautifully, doesn't it? Scapes are starting. Soon we'll have scapes to harvest. There are not many right yet, they're just starting. You see, I wait till they come up and if they're free, they'll curl down around and then they'll start to come up again. And that's when I uh, harvest them. The beans in this bed is doing really nicely. And as you can see, the chamomile, I've got going to come out tomorrow and pick most of these flowers. They'll flower all summer. And you just leave some flowers to just continue on and go to seed. Um, but most of them you can pick. And the best time to pick them is when they're straight out like this. Anyway, back to the beans. Uh, you see... They're growing nicely. These plants are starting to take right off and I thought that I would dig up every second one and transplant them. But the problem is, when you transplant them, you set them way back. And I don't know, I mean, it's only the few right there. If you're planting out a lot, yeah, you space them out, but it's only that few. And maybe I'll just let them grow there and see what they do. So I've got that row of vegetable marrow, and I really like vegetable marrow, so I want them to grow there. I have this, which is a wattam butternut, just two of them. Um, 
no, there's three, four, five. This here is just your basic butternut. And there's two bushcrop cucumber over here. This looks like a calendula, but I don't know what that is. This is an annual, so maybe it's uh, marigold. I don't know. I gotta wait till it flowers. There's a lot of plants that I don't know what is what yet. And uh, the label's missing, and I can't find where I wrote it down. Now, as far as this goes, this is the white scallop squash. And there is two that I see growing there now. The butterfly milkweed transplant, they both died. This is a learning thing. It's not a failure, it's a learning thing. I've tried several ways now, and the only way that I seem to get the garden to grow really well is to put that layer of compost on top. I tried tilling it in, I tried here is the core compost method, and I've tried putting it in between the rows after I add the plants in. The only way I found it said so now that's growing excellent is put down sifted compost as a nice soft layer and plant the seeds in that. The seeds germinate well and they grow well. And if you're putting in something really small transplants like onions, same thing. Put them down in some compost. They have moisture and nutrients right away. They get going before the roots are down into the uh, other soil. I hear some thunder in the distance. I don't know if it's going to be raining here soon or not. don't think there's anything overly interesting in this. Oh, yeah. So, that onion that I planted to go to seed, it's just got that one stalk still, so I don't know what's happening with that. But you can see over there that there are some onions, a couple onions there that are growing really nice. And then uh, there's onions. They're coming along, and I might get a good, a decent sized onion off it, but they're still very small. Now coming along here, this is the ones that grow really huge if I can get them to grow. Uh, but the red spring, uh, so red spring is a good onion for here. Uh, both for setting out uh, growing transplants and when you transplant them out, they have less transplant shock than uh, some of the other varieties. And this is Alyssa Craig, I think. They're fairly decent too and every, almost every one of the transplanted onions that I but uh, that I put out here of Alyssa Craig, they are growing. Red Spring and Alyssa Craig, as far as transplanting grow, goes, I think they're about the same, but they haven't taken off as fast as the Red Spring did. And then I have these rows of beans here, that's uh, baking beans. The bed of disappointment, you see that's a rhubarb right there, so I gotta harvest some more rhubarb from that too. So I went and I was weeding out this end, and there might have been a half a dozen uh, beets growing there, so I said forget it. I took that compost I uh, had and I just did over this half of the bed and I reseeded it. I reseeded the whole bed. There are some beets growing, but very few. And I think I said in another video, yeah, we got that uh, weeds there, but I'm going to have to weed it out and actually put a good mulch in between each row. Same as I got done here. I can put a better mulch there than that now, actually. But most of what you see here, is the bed right next door to it, is the sugar beets. I've got very few space is missing. A couple of them is not growing as well as they should. There's two, three lettuce plants in here or something. And then those really dark ones, one there, and the two right here. That's the uh, self-seeded Brussels sprouts. Growing great, that bet is. The Ruga is doing well. And so these are uh, vegetable marrow as well. This one is looking like it's getting nutrient deficient, but it's also looking like it's going to start to try to put on a flower. The thing is, these things, see, they put on flowers according to heat, 
not according to the size of the plant. And I've taken all the arugula up around the plant to give it an opening. And that's what I'll do as it grows bigger. I'll just take up arugula back and keep it open around the plant. But there's two. And this one is growing the best. And you see, it's got a flower coming on it. Even though it's tiny. And that is because we've had hot days. I don't know if this is going to come to anything. So there's three or four of these here. Uh, that's the golden pearls. We just have to wait and see. I bought 12 tomato plants. That's what that is here. Two in here. But also in here, It just says cucumber. What kind of a cucumber? I don't know. But because I didn't have a cucumber plant, I bought that one. And this one just says winter squash. We're going to take these two right now and go somewhere. So remember the remains of the compost bin, the two garden huckleberry in the center there are still alive. There's one over there in the corner and there's one down over there. Because apparently the two that I put here is not going to come to anything, I'm going to put these two here. That'll be just fine, and I'll stick that in there to remind me that it is a cucumber. That's actually the bottom there, so I got about four inches of compost there. But that's packed in compost, mind you. Nice root system. So that's what we'll do with those two. Back to talking about tomatoes, I was gifted a tomato plant, and I didn't kill it. I planted it in here, and it was come up about this high after I got it planted. And now it's growing, it's flowering, and I've got some tomatoes coming on here. That. I understand is uh, it grows tomatoes about the size that you would use for uh, slicing to put on a sandwich. For Cynthia, this bed is doing excellent. I just put on some more mulch there in the center yesterday, so this bed is completely mulched now. <coughs> Got my flags up for Canada Day. And of course I got the metal mode so I can actually do a little swing around here and you can see what it's like when the metal is actually mowed. I've been having some salads the last few days, but I was taking them from other areas where they were getting big enough to interfere with the vegetables I was wanting to grow in each bed. But they're interfering with each other here now, so I'm going to start taking up plants in here. Take up every second one and let the uh, ones that are then no longer crowded to grow. But I did weed this out, and you can see, hopefully, the uh, dill that's growing here much better now. Go around this pear tree. 
You see these plants? That's a black jet soybean. They don't seem to be doing anything much. So I don't know if they're going to come to anything or not. But the dill and the lettuce, excellent. See, this is what I'm saying. I did the last uh, round. Actually, I don't think I even got to this bit. But here we've got the uh, Jerusalem artichoke growing right along. Check this out. This come from seed. This is Love Lies Bleeding Amaranth. Now something heat the top off that one, but I did get one to come out from seed. And these are transplants. They are growing. They're only half that size when I put them there. Here's one, two, three, and the one that's growing the best right there. So that's exciting because if I can get them to grow and they seed, uh, then the seed that I will have lost down on the ground here Some of them will grow next year and grow well I have quite a few plants that are coming good. That is the uh, Hollyock These are all perennials I set in here. I'm letting this one grow up so I can key it out This is just a regular weed, but I want to figure out what it is now these these are um the soya beans, which are growing better over here. I might get something from them in this bed. But that was actually what my idea was, because you see, this bed is full of sun. That one is a shade. It's a rough compost there and sifted compost there. So I don't think the uh, fertility has anything to do with it. It's just that that one is in under the shade of the maple tree and it's got the pear tree in front of it. There's a lot of shade there for most of the day and this one most of the day gets pretty much full of sun so there's a way more sun on this bed <clears throat> and I think that might be the difference. Oh, the rain is starting. These here, that's more uh, calendula. Okay, I think there is a butterfly milkweed growing up here somewhere, but I'm not seeing it right now. So I guess I just wait some more. Looks like there was something growing there and it died. There is a couple of echinacea growing there. Of course I've got volunteer tomato plants growing up all over. I'm going to take up this lamb's quarter. There, I've got another uh, amaranth there. See that? The uh, love lies bleeding. I'm starting to mulch heavily around all the trees now. And my thinking is that once I get a layer of organic matter built up, so it'll be grass clippings, kelp, uh, wood chips every now and then put a ring of mulch around a tree and uh, get a layer of organic matter built up then the plants that I don't want there they'll be easy to pull up and I'll be able to plant what plants I do want to undergrow them with check the number of blossoms on this I really hope that comes out in a cloud of smoke this year that'd be nice no, the, uh, none of the flowers got pollinated on the Romeo cherry, apparently. Look how this thing is growing. <laughs> it's growing like crazy. This garden hose is laid down here. This is just a cheap old garden hose that I, I had to buy the one that I'm using because this, once it got in the sun, it just, it's so soft and went to nothing. But, I can use it, and I have a plan, I'm going, it's starting to rain now, so I'll tell you in another video, but I have a plan for here. Uh, this front garden, I have to do some adjustments before I 
actually get back and get serious with uh, trying to get things to grow here. I'm trying to figure it out, but it's way too dry, and that garden knows as somewhat to do with uh, what I'm going to do here. I got cannon growing out there, see? Nicely, but I'm not going to pick that. I'm just going to let the cannon go wild here for a couple of years. I'll just pick the stuff up in the garden, in the vegetable garden. I collected some uh, nasturtium seeds last year and I set them out here and they're actually growing, which, I, which surprised me. But they are. Looks like I might get a flower on that uh, echinacea this year. So this would be a purple one according to the uh, seed packet. The snow peas are starting to uh, take off now. Didn't get a very good display of uh, flowers on the columbine this year. This one's not uh, Putting out a flower, I don't think this year. That's an echinacea as well, a purple echinacea. We'll soon have this rose bush full of flowers, full of roses, and another echinacea. Got the wood all split up. Got to get that packed in now. It's still raining, but I'm going to continue walking up around, and uh, I'll soon be done. The flowers are starting to come on the liatris. Yeah, the evergreen uh, onions, they're all flowering. I don't mind, but I'm just saying I didn't expect them to be. There's an oregano, Greek oregano, and it's growing perfectly. They close up, you see, the flowers were open earlier today, eh? and they uh, close up when it starts to rain or at night so I can't show you them when they're open they're kind of a star shaped yellow flower there is some excitement here see okay so the uh, oregano you see what I have here that's a uh, California poppy so I've got a California poppy now right in the middle of the center uh, fence portion so that'll spread out both ways from there. But look, I haven't been down here in a couple of days. The peas have all flowered. There's a California poppy about the flower bud right there. This is difficult to get at and I have to adjust it. What I want to do, cut back the sod at least two feet um, on from either side of the fence. On this side, I'm going to have to put some kind of a platform or a retaining wall or something so that I can walk along there beside the bed nicely and uh, get at it. It's very uncomfortable because of the drop off right behind you to get at this section and uh, keep it weeded. And on the inside, it's actually quite a bit lower. When I was putting this fence in, I was trying to put it in straight and on evenness of the ground. It ended up that uh, the soil right beside the fence was quite a bit lower than the level of the sod. And so that's the trouble there. I can't mow right to the edge. I have to put some kind of a border there that comes up to the level of the sod. And in reality, I would like to bring the level of the bed up to the level of the sod. So I might uh, have, like I say, put a retaining wall there on the inside and on the outside put a uh, wall up high enough it'll look like a raised bed on the outside and then just fill the whole thing in with soil and bring it all up. That's the plan. Uh, yeah, like I say, I, <laughs> I'm surprised I come out here, oh look at the pea flowers. So I'm going to be getting some sweet uh, sugar snap peas there pretty soon. I was going to ignore this area as well until I figured out a way to keep the weeds out of it. But then I thought about, I have extra potato sets. I should put them in there. So this morning I came out and I tore all the weeds out of here and I set the potato sets in, in this area. 
and in here 48 sets in all so when they come up I'll just keep mulching it every time I mow and that's the uh, growth of the annual plantings this is going to run about 40 minutes that's I guess how long it takes for me to uh, do a tour of the annuals let me know is that too uh, long is it boring when it gets that long I try to make my videos I would like to make my videos about 20 minutes but uh, as I've been saying I get to doing this and this time of year it, there's so much growing and so much to show that it ends up being 40 minutes for just the annuals and then there's of course the trees that would have to be on a different video I hope you enjoyed it uh, and uh, yeah hit the like button and I hope to see you in the next video